The word of God today is taken from the epistle reading of Ephesians chapter 1, 15 through 23. In Christ the ascended beloved hears. Today we are emphasizing the ascension of our Lord because by it you will see God at work for you. It is not uncommon in our personal life to see a person honored for their achievements that benefits so many people. When Jesus ascended into heaven, his work was completed that benefited the whole world. Most importantly, all that God in Christ worked for you and in you can't be undone because of the value he places upon you. St. Paul reveals in the text that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of a revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your heart enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. The focus of the enlightened eyes of your heart is that you have arrived at the state of knowing God in Christ personally of what he did for you. And in summary, this is it. We confess in the Nicene Creed, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. God incarnate, the Lord Jesus, fully God and fully man, was recognized by the wise men who followed the star. From the scriptures, we followed him from a boy in the temple to a man whom John the Baptist pointed and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Je Jesus' baptism, the Spirit came down upon him, and from the scriptures we hear the voice of the Father saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him, as the Father endorsed his Son, and the Spirit affirmed it. Tempted in the wilderness, Jesus held to, guise, to God's high-saving purpose to fulfill the law. Through the season of Lent, we followed as Jesus moved to the fulfillment of his purpose. Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter. All our wrong, our sins, Jesus took on himself and he bore the punishment for them. He was taken, he was forsaken as we would have deserved so that we might not be forsaken by God but forgiven. And because of what Jesus did for us there at the cross in the empty tomb, God made it possible for us to be made alive again as the children of God by faith in Jesus' redeeming work. According to the epistle text, God's great might that he worked in Jesus when he raised him from the dead and exalted him at the right hand of God in the heavenly places is the same immeasurable greatness of the power of God, the Holy Spirit, that he works in all who would believe. Jesus' hands that were stretched out on the cross were the same hand stretched out before the disciples and Thomas in the sealed room to bless them with added faith. As Jesus said, touch me and see, I'm not a ghost. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Jesus standing in their presence made the light, made his light shine in their hearts to give them the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. At the mount where Jesus ascended, Jesus once again stretched out his hands to bless his disciples to keep strengthening the faith of those who doubted as he ascended and disappeared from their sight. Now, I want you to take note that Jesus' ascension does not mean that God is gone forever. Before Jesus' ascension, Jesus promised that where we are, he will be with us. The difference is that after Jesus' ascension, Jesus doesn't show himself anymore, at least not until the end of the world or our bodily resurrection. And it's a good thing that Jesus appears to us now in a complete exalted glory for if Jesus had continued to show himself as he did before his resurrection, where would he be this morning? Is he here in this room or is he at the Methodist church or the Baptist church or the Christian church in Lockwood? If Jesus operated according to the local mode as he did in a state of humiliation, we would have to say if he's here, he's not over there. 
But because Jesus rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, all who believe in Jesus in America, in Eastern Europe, in China, all over the world, Jesus is with us as he promises. How Jesus manages all that, according to our finite mind, we can't figure out. But Jesus' manhood possesses and fully shares in his deity so that Jesus, as true God and true man, is present as he fills all things. The text confirms that God seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, above every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Jesus is now present and does things in the whole range of God's way of being present and doing things in his exalted flesh in heaven and on earth, sitting at the right hand of the Father Almighty. The right hand doesn't mean a local place, but the exercise of the whole power of God in Jesus' hands. This exercise of the whole power of God in the hands of Jesus is for the church. For God placed all things under his feet and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all things. By the ascension of our Lord, God wants you to see God at work for you. The pastor in his pastoral office stands in the place of Christ, and Jesus lifted his hands and said to Hardrew Terry this morning and to Drew Michael in the 1030 service, receive the sign of the cross both upon the forehead and upon the heart to mark you as one who has been redeemed by Christ the crucified. Hardrew Terry and Drew Michael are added to the invisible Christian church and are now members along with us in the body of Christ of which Christ is the head and we are the members of his body. He is our life and his life is our life. We share in his crucifixion and his resurrection and ascension which includes the glory yet to come. Jesus who possesses fellowship with the Father is full with the Spirit gives all members of his body who believe and are baptized the right to be with him in glory. Thus, Jesus says, because where I am, there you will be also. And what's Jesus doing for us now? By the power of God that carried Jesus through his suffering and death, raised him from the dead and ascended him into heaven, is that same power Jesus works in you to open your eyes, to be enlightened, in this one true faith to become Jesus' inheritor. He has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you, he had not shown mercy, but now you have received mercy. You are the product of God's work in you through your baptism and faith. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. As Jesus' inheritance, the saints of God, of such value are you to Jesus that through the church of which he's the head, Jesus will keep using that same Godhead omnipotence and omniscient power to keep you as his own in this one true faith. And the pastor will stand before you at the end of the worship service and raise his hands and Jesus, speaking through the mouth of the pastor, will say, the Lord bless you and keep you. And Jesus, literally in the fullness of his exalted and glorified manhood, will do it as in the blessing, the sign of the cross is made once again. Without the cross, there's no blessing. And because Jesus, in the total submission, went to the cross for our salvation, washed away our sins, was raised from the dead, exerting all power and authority over Satan's sin and death in the grave. Even now, by his ascension, Satan's sin and death are under Jesus' feet. None of what Christ did and accomplished for you cannot be undone 
as, it's infer- as it is affirmed in his ascension. That's why we celebrate ascension today, because our faith has a solid foundation that can never be shaken. Jesus remains near to us in our baptism, in the Lord's Supper, through the gospel, blessing us, enlightening us, keeping us in the one true faith, and carrying out the good work of proclaiming the gospel to others through you, so that many more people may be grafted into the body of Christ by baptism and faith. Jesus, as true God and true man, continually intercedes for you before the Father in heaven without interruption. He pleads for you, rules your heart and mind, is concerned about you, protects you, so that not even the gates of hell will prevail against you. God wants you to see today how in the ascension of our Lord, God at work for you, and it's happening every day. Be awakened to faith in Christ and be strengthened in it as you rejoice in his glorious ascension. Now, if at your death you don't want to be under Satan's captivity, hold fast in faith to your ascended Lord because now you're already free and one day you will follow Jesus into glory. When Jesus raised his hands to bless his disciples on the mount of where he ascended, Jesus was thinking of you when he gave this command to his disciples. Preach the gospel to the whole nation. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, and he who believes not will be condemned. And it's God's will through Jesus that no one be condemned, but all saved through the gospel. It's God's will that the eyes of the heart be open and the hearer knows and believes in the hope to which he's been called. May you always know the surety of your salvation in Christ Jesus and never cast aside this sure foundation set secure in our ascended Lord. To him be glory and praise here and now and through all eternity. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, keep our hearts and mind in Christ to life everlasting. Amen. Please stand and we sing, Create in me a clean heart, O God. The word of God today is taken from the epistle reading of Ephesians chapter 1, 15 through 23. In Christ the ascended beloved hears, Today, we are emphasizing the ascension of our Lord because by it you will see God at work for you. It is not uncommon in our personal life to see a person honored for their achievements that benefits so many people. When Jesus ascended into heaven, his work was completed that benefited the whole world. Most importantly, all that God in Christ worked for you and in you can't be undone because of the value he places upon you. St. Paul reveals in the text that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of a revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your heart enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. The focus of the enlightened eyes of your heart is that you have arrived at the state of knowing God in Christ personally of what he did for you. And in summary, this is it. We confess in the Nicene Creed, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. God incarnate, the Lord Jesus Fully God and fully man was recognized by the wise men who followed the star. From the scriptures, we followed him from a boy in the temple to a man whom John the Baptist pointed and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus' baptism, the Spirit came down upon him, and from the scriptures, we hear the voice of the Father saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him as the Father endorsed his Son, and the Spirit affirmed it. Tempted in the wilderness, Jesus held to to God's high-saving purpose to fulfill the law. Through the season of Lent, we followed as Jesus moved to the fulfillment of his purpose. Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, 
Good Friday, and Easter. All our wrong, our sins, Jesus took on himself, and he bore the punishment for them. He was taken. He was forsaken, as we would have deserved, so that we might not be forsaken by God, but forgiven. And because of what Jesus did for us there at the cross in the empty tomb, God made it possible for us to be made alive again as the children of God by faith in Jesus' redeeming work. According to the epistle text, God's great might that he worked in Jesus when he raised him from the dead and exalted him at the right hand of God in the heavenly places is the same immeasurable greatness of the power of God, the Holy Spirit, that he works in all who would believe. Jesus' hands that were stretched out on the cross were the same hands stretched out before the disciples and Thomas in the sealed room to bless them with added faith as Jesus said, touch me and see, I'm not a ghost. Stop doubting and believe.